I can't believe I got sweat stains all over my other shirt. Well, at least you have a bunch. That's true. It's always good to have more shirts. I don't mean to brag, but I have a bunch of shirts. <laughs> Unlike hats. Yeah, I've got like uh, one or two hats. Mm -hmm. I need to get that Pharrell hat. <laughs> you really want Where do you get that hat? Pharrell.com? Yeah, or like a Mountie store? Yeah. Where you buy Mountie supplies? Yogi Bear Park Ranger store? Mm-hmm. We hang together on rooftops forever. We hang together. We hang together. It's Rooftop X. Hi, welcome to Rooftop X. I'm Ben. And I'm Bryn. And today we're going to be talking about Ben Frost's new record, Aurora. So I first found out about Ben Frost um, from looking, in a weird way, from looking at the liner notes of another artist I really, really love um, named Colin Stetson, who I had learned that he... Of Stetson hats? No, no. Uh... He doesn't even wear hats. But the, the album was produced and recorded by one of the guys from Godspeed, You Black Emperor, um, and mixed by a man named Ben Frost. And for some reason, just like the whole production of that album was so incredible to me, I, I was just looking up people's names. And Ben Frost... Um, is the Stetson album similar to the Ben Frost album? No, it's Stetson. Colin Stetson is a man who plays one saxophone, and it's enormous saxophone, and it sounds like electronic music. It's oh, okay. A, it's incredible. Um, I'll link you to some of it down there. Um, but Ben Frost... That sounds like um, Moon Hooch. Do you know them? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's Because he plays a big contra bass. Yeah, this is a baritone. It's a modified baritone bass with like... The albums are recorded with like 23 mics. Like one's on his throat. He like kind of sings and like it's, it's really impressive. Wow. Um, but this new record is leaps and bounds his best record. Uh, it's him doing all electronic stuff rather than sometimes he would do guitar and piano and stuff. This is all electronic, but he also hired Greg, Greg Fox um, from X Liturgy and uh, currently doing Guardian Alien, which is his solo project. Um, him and Thor from Swans, who also put out an incredible record this year called To Be Kind. So it has a very, very Swans percussion feel. Um, it's somehow really aggressive and really noisy, but also really catchy to me. Um, everything is so melodic and everything is so put together. Um, I'm in love with it. What do you think of it? Yeah, I uh, uh, was not surprised by it when I turned it on, given that it was sent to me from you. Um, yeah, big aggressive sounds with some subtlety in there, but the the main thrust of it is very, very big sounds and very ag aggressive arrangements. Um, but then sometimes, yeah, it does get a little delicate here and there. But yeah, and Thor... And also, unlike a lot of music like this, this does seem like it would be cool live. Oh, yeah. It sounds really like nothing else. Uh, I don't know anybody who's making music this bombastic and this aggressive and this dark. Um, as well as being just somehow kind of catchy um, mm -hmm. and hooky and well composed. So I'm going to give it a 10. What? I'm going to give a it a 10. 10. A 10. I thought you said there were no perfect 10s. You said Oh, that. I will go back to it. I do want to hear it again. I'll, um, so, but for now, I'll give it a, a 7. Okay. With the possibility of that being uh, updated to an 8. Yeah. I think, that, I think an 8 is a fair fair rating for you. Okay. That's great. Ben Frost, Aurora, what does Lucas Jr. think of it? What do you think of this one, Lucas? Man, this is like something out of a Broadway musical. No, no. <laughs> Did you guys ever? I wouldn't say that. It, it reminds me of uh, Once. Once, the Irish acoustic <laughs> musical? That is yeah, look, not. There was a point in there when they did this. Watch. 
I want to tell you two things. <laughs> there is no guitar in this song, and there's no Irish people singing. There's not even singing at all. I am going to take a nap now. <laughs> <laughs> because why? Because it's so much like once that you just want to lay down and... Look guys, I want to tell you something. These clouds I'm looking at right now, <laughs> they look like you can almost see pictures. I uh, I don't can you turn it up? I can't even hear it. No, that's the highest it goes. Okay. <laughs> that's good enough for me then. I mean, you're dancing. Yeah, I dance all the time because music is my life. <laughs> 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 is music your life? Guys, music is my life! Do you like this music? Yeah, guys, do you guys want to go to the park and get some acid? Listen, look. <laughs> I don't know why you think there's acid in the park. I also don't think you know what acid is. I, you know, people tell me stuff and I believe everything, so well, I don't know what you want me to do. Tell me what acid looks like. <laughs> it's clear. And it, it's in aliens. No, no. The they have acid, acid for blood. The acid here. They're dead, okay? Can I go now? <laughs> <laughs> they only come out at night. Mostly. Why are you quoting aliens? <laughs> I'm asking you what acid is. Hudson, this little girl survived with no weapons and with no training. So you're just quoting the movie. Well, why don't you put her in charge? <laughs> I'm surprised you've even seen a movie. I love that movie. What other movies do you like? Uh, Aliens yeah. is the best. Aliens is the best. Second movie. best is uh, this documentary about the making of the musical Once. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even exist. Third best is. Uh, the Tony Awards where Neil Patrick Harris sang a song from once. <laughs> and fourth best is How I Met Your Mom. I am completely baffled <laughs> your knowledge of anything. <laughs> I don't understand. Anyway, where... what's your four favorite movies? This doesn't seem like the segment <laughs> to be doing that in. <laughs> Alright, fuck you guys then. <laughs> fuck you too. <laughs> All right, this is a segment we're going to call Cinematics. Cinematics. A little documentary called A Band Called Death. The story is about this band from Detroit who- Punk band. Punk band, probably to be considered one of the first punk bands of all time. They were along the same timeline as the MC5. Two years before the Ramones. Two years before the Ramones. Uh, and they were doing crazy shit. It's really raw, and it's really punk. They're black guys. Right, and most people think of punk as a UK thing, a white kid thing, and yeah. they were sort of doing it before everybody, and no one knows about them. And so this is a story about this, these three guys just with one, ma the main singer, um, just having this uncompromising vision of what he wanted his band to be. And yeah. they almost got signed to Capitol, I think, except they wouldn't have published the band with the name Death. Yeah, nobody liked the name Death. Fast forward to, what, 2004, I think? Right. These record collectors are passing this shit around. Somebody puts it on a blog. Yeah, I like the part where, I guess, uh, before David is gonna die, David uh, goes to his brothers to tell him to give them the master tapes and says, right. someday somebody's gonna come looking for these. Keep these tapes. So I want to know that you have them. And 30 years later, someone did. The weird thing about this was I remember when this happened in college. Really? I remembered some music blogs that I was following talking about this band called Death, and I remember I was kind of over my punk phase. Uh -huh. I was interested in the story, but the music didn't do a lot for me yeah. um, at the time. But I do remember that happening. Um, so when this movie came out, I was like, oh, I'd love to know more about this story. Um, and I actually kind of like the music more now. Yeah. I, my horizons continue to expand. Uh -huh. uh, one thing I didn't like about this movie is how shoehorned the sentimentality felt. That's sort of 
this huge part of the story. Um, and I was more interested in, they don't do a lot to explain why, they don't go into the politics of the racial tension at the time. They don't sure. really go into the politics of why Capital didn't, they don't, re they don't even have an interview with the person who denied them. Right. And then like, you know, the Ramones and the Sex Pistols came out on Capital very soon after. Yeah, I think the pacing is also a little off for, for how interested I wasn't in the story. Um, and how much I enjoy the music and, and think it's a really cool story. It just felt long. I was like, okay, I got it. I more enjoy a verite style of documentary making, so I wish there had been some more of that. Um, like, I like interviews, too. I could listen to a lengthy interview that's not all cut up. Just like one sentence, then it cuts to this, then a sound bite here, one more sentence. That can get overwhelming and, and and, tiresome. And, yeah, and tiresome and, and it can seem long when I think the intention is to make it seem more interesting what it does to me is the opposite of that. Yeah, same. It and definitely had a sort of VH1 MTV style yeah. to it and because it's a music documentary maybe that's why these stylistic choices were made. Um, and I, I guess that would work for maybe a 40 minute TV show right, documentary. Right, but it's like an hour and a half and it But feels for a long. feature, yeah. It feels a little long. Yeah. Um, but I do like the story of the guys, and I can definitely see why there there was uh, uh, somebody felt compelled to make a movie about it because it is super fascinating. Yeah, it's. I, I would recommend watching the movie if you know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know something about it now. So. But I like the movie. I recommend it. I mean, I like the story. That's the great thing about a documentary is even if you don't like the way the movie is made you can get off on the story that the movie's yeah, telling. Yeah, the information. And okay, so I say see it. I say see it too. All right. This is viewer emails. Our producer Kristen is here with some emails for us. What is the first email, Kristen? Okay, Tommy DeRoom. Tommy DeRue wants to know, what kind of underwear do women like to see men in? Briefs, bikini bottoms, boxers? Not bikini bottoms, for sure. Yeah, I don't feel I can weigh in on this. I like to see men in no underwear. Yeah, naked. Uh, yeah, mostly naked. Free ball it. I don't And really these briefs care. things, like the tidy whities there's no point to those anymore except for comedic effect in movies, right? People aren't wearing those anymore, really, are they? I think I've yeah, tidy whities just like no one's wearing up, those, right? Straight up, it's back unless to your you're like under count ten, too. keeps oh. your balls close to your, <laughs> your body. <laughs> they are Ben. Whose balls are far away from their body? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not wearing any underwear. My balls are way over there. If, if okay, but wait, <laughs> they're so far from my body. Is there an underwear choice that if you're about to have sex with a guy, you'd be like turned off? Like, Sir, you know what? I'm amused by boxers with like cartoons and stuff on it, but if it was like, I, I don't know, something racist or sexist. <laughs> the only deal breaker is, a, no, is some guy you. who has novelty racist boxers. <laughs> thank you. Bro. I'm just imagining the guy that's like, what am I going to wear on my date tonight? I've got these racist boxers. <laughs> Love what, it. what what are on a pair of racist boxers? <laughs> like I wouldn't feel comfortable saying on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next email. <laughs> Let just, me open this up here. Like it's just a it's just a pair email. of email white boxers. <laughs> you can't you have to cut that out. <laughs> Where did he get those? Barbara Louise wants really. to know. I have a music question. Music question. I often hide the fact that I love New Kids on the Block. What song or artists are your guilty pleasure? I like Sugar Ray. Me too. I like everything that they do. <laughs> They're fantastic. <laughs> I, I think they are one of the catchiest. Some of their stuff is really creative, like every morning uh -huh. and like all of those like really weird dissonant yeah. somehow still really catchy. I still love NSYNC. Yeah. I went to an Aaron Carter concert recently. Oh, really? That might be, it's not a guilty pleasure, but it's, You're a little it's a little shameful. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. There were like 16 year olds at the concert. I was like, Weird. were you here on this planet when Aaron Carter was around? 
Sometimes I listen to Lord a little too much. <laughs> like, I've listened to that record a lot, mm -hmm. um, and I love it. I think it's a great record. Um, but I do, I do every time I listen to it. I'm like, that's so funny the way you say it. It sounds like you're talking about a drug or something. You're like, it's called I pure think heroin. I'm listening to the Lord album too much. <laughs> Lucky Lori. Lucky Lori. So humble. People say it's better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. Say circumstances have set an end date to your relationship. Would falling in love with someone be, for a short amount of time, be worth the certain headache that will come when it's over? Over a relationship ending for some reason is like the worst heartache there is. Like sometimes you can even feel physical pain. And then sometimes the the memory of, of a lost love is yeah. hard to deal with. I think the trick is to not think, I think about. I think it would be better to not have loved. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story of C.S. Lewis, the writer. Uh -huh. um, he married a woman who he knew had a, a lethal disease. Wow. Um, and she died, like he knew she was going to die and like the next year she died. Oh. And he wrote this book called A Grief Observed. Wow. Um, that is just the most heartbreaking thing I've ever read. Because um, he really loves her and it uh -huh. was, it was, they were great together and then that's, that's just how it went. And um, I don't want to do that. Like I would, I'd just be like, I can't, I can't involve myself mm. in this because that's, he has to live with that. Yeah sadness and pain for the rest of his life. Right. That's not a good, that's not Yeah, it good. doesn't seem like a, an enriching experience. <laughs> it sounds like a terrible <laughs> yeah. experience. It, that intense sadness is then mirrored with these moments of intense happiness. So thinking back know, at your so past is loves, it worth you it? feel, it is, because you, you remember the happiest moment paired with the saddest moment, and it's kind of melancholy, but I think the remedy is to feel whatever you're feeling to the max, and you know, you may get hurt eventually, you may cry eventually, but you're not there yet. Right. Don't put the cart before the horse, feel that love, and don't think of anything but that love until you have to. You. I think I'm sort of in the middle on this one because I'm not afraid of emotions, good or bad. Like, I think I'm with you in the sense that experience is important and experiencing all that life has is cool. But it does depend on the circumstance in the sense of like, if you know that it's gonna be so short that it's almost gonna be all hurt, yeah. like, then I would shield myself from that. I think it's beautiful that such two different emotions and experiences can sit right next to each other in your memory. Thanks, Linda, for <laughs> that question. Yeah, Lori. All right, I guess that's yeah, viewer that, emails. That's real. <laughs> um, let's go, we're gonna love is pain. Cry. Please send us more questions. Fashion is pain. <laughs> It's better to look good than to feel good. Suffer for fashion. Yeah. Um, Vomit after you Send eat. us more questions in the comments, please, or on our email or on Twitter. Um, all of that information is there. Thank you for watching this episode of Rooftopics. And until next time, top, top of the, the world, world to ya.